Hi, my name is uh, Heather Smith. Uh, I'm the author of Zero for Dummies, Zero Platinum Partner, Chartered Accountant. And uh, over the weekend, I was updating uh, Zero uh, for Dummies, the book I write. And I was writing about the expense claims section within uh, Zero, And there seems to be a lot of confusion around expense claims. So I thought I would try um, and pull together and, and provide um, an explanation of how I understand it uh, to share that with you to hopefully um, help you on your cloud journey. This video is August 2018. So you need to be mindful um, when you're watching it because there may have been changes that have happened since then. So this is, I'm telling you, um, current status. Within Xero, there is a solution called expense claims, and this was inbuilt into Xero. Outside of Xero is an app called Zero Expenses. Okay, so it's a completely separate app that's on your mobile device, but then when you come into the desktop solution, of zero, you can again find zero expenses. So you can simultaneously have um, expense claims and zero expenses, but you really should only be using uh, one of them. But you can, if you have activated expense claims, go back and have a look at it, uh, even if you are using zero expenses. If I initially talk about expense claims and zero, I wrote about that topic probably eight to 10 years ago when I wrote the very first Zero for Dummies. Um, and it took me a long time to write it. I was very confused. I didn't find the processes or the steps to be intuitive. And, uh, but I kept quiet about it and waited for that to sort of hit the market and other people to be using it. And sort of generally the consensus is there's a lot of advisors who would say, avoid using zero expense claims. That's the feature within zero, zero expense claims. Now, the reason for that, the primary reason for that is the steps are a little bit confusing. Um, there's a little bit too many steps in there, but if you make a mistake, you cannot, it's very extremely difficult to correct it. So I myself have in my, my live zero file have ghost transactions in there that are mistakes that I can't correct, I can't get rid of. Um, and if you want a neat file, you kind of end up with these things hanging around that you actually don't want to have there. And it's very, very difficult to, to, to correct them. I would recommend against using expense claims. However, when the new solution uh, that Zero released, which is Zero Expenses, the app, the individual app that's available separately, was released. They said they would take away expense claims. However, there was an outcry, and so now they have said they will allow, they will enable both of them to stay. So that the current state is both will be available. Expense claims within Zero is free and uh, will remain available. I would only use that if you are very, very, very careful and know exactly what you're doing and understand the steps. And if you want to give people access to that, make sure they absolutely understand what they're doing. If you are um, the bookkeeper or the administrator of the accounts, um, doing uh, looking over the accounts and someone submits an expense claim, it's very difficult for you to correct it. So you need to be really clear that if you want to use that, that uh, everyone in your organization has a clear understanding that it has to be error free um, and, and submitted that way. Jumping over to zero expenses. So this is the new solution with zero, zero expenses. It's on a separate app, as I keep saying, I'm just because it's, it's a little bit confusing. And this will be something that you pay in addition for. So if the user, the end user is using it, um, you will pay uh, something per user that there, there's an amount per user. Um, I'm not exactly sure what it is. You can go and refer to zero pricing to understand uh, what that is, but it's a good differentiator on that. So I just want to run through um, with, uh, this is something for expense claims. Okay. So, so very specifically it's for expense claims. It is not for processing your typical accounts payable. If I um, am, am doing my typical accounts payable work, which means I have a supplier bill, I will scan that for me personally and I will upload that to Receipt Bank and Receipt Bank will process that and will push that into zero. But for 
expense claims where a staff has gone out, travelled, perhaps they've travelled, they purchased some petrol and they purchased that on using their own money and they want to claim it back from the business um, or they purchased it on a corporate credit card and they want to monitor and claim it back from the business. That's when they would use an expense claim feature. It would come back in and someone would authorize um, that that payment was legitimate, a legitimate business expense and that uh, the, the staff member or the contractor can be paid back for that amount of money. So that's, that's kind of uh, what the um, expense claims process is um, using zero um, expenses. So let me just run through a few things that um, I, I noted uh, as I was um, updating this. Um, they're not in any particular order, I apologize. I probably should have sorted them. That would have made it easier. So one of the things is uh, with zero expenses, you can only submit a single expense claim at a time. So you have to scan the receipt and upload it individually. Um, so you can only submit a single one at a time or on the desktop, you can only submit a single one at a time. I will highlight that um, with Expensify, which is an expense claim solution, you can, you can submit multiple at a time. And uh, if you're using Receipt Bank for expense claims, because Receipt Bank does have expense claims features, you can submit multiple at a time. That might improve, I don't know. August 2018, that's when I'm telling you this. Using zero uh, expenses, you cannot access the demo company of the zero expenses app. Um, say for training purposes. If you want to train someone in it or show someone how to use it, you have to actually set up a demo, uh, your own training file. You cannot access the zero demo file to do that. So that's just a, a small thing that might impact some people in terms of training people. Zero expenses on your mobile device can be allocated uh, to a single account code. So on your mobile device, if you scan the receipt and you upload it via zero expenses you can only it's only allocated to a single account code so then once it uh, uh, goes up and you're in on watching looking at it on your desktop you can split it between accounts okay but you cannot do it from the the mobile device again with the expensify you can do that and uh, with receipt bank you can do that in zero expenses, when you delete an expense, it gives you the option to notify the person who submitted it. So if you reject an expense, it gives you that option. So that's a good thing. So if, if you as the authorizer refuse an expense, there's the option there to, to let the submitter know that the expense was refused. And I'll note that in uh, expense claims, that wasn't there. So the person submitting the claim would have no idea that their expense claim had been refused. In zero expenses, the expense on an accrual basis is recorded as per the receipt date. And once approved, it can't be changed, but can be changed before approval. So if you think about a typical scenario, um, an end user um, submits six months worth of receipts that could potentially go all the way back and impact um, multiple tax submissions. Um, so that can be a potential issue if you don't have people submitting on a timely basis and you're not monitoring that before uh, the approval stage. In expense claims, which is the earlier version, you could actually assign a different reporting date there if you wanted to. So that was an interesting sort of feature. Um, realistically, you would want them reported when they actually were incurred, um, but practically that doesn't necessarily all, always happen and you don't necessarily want to go back and uh, change your financial data. The OCR capability, so that is the optical character recognition capability, or I have props when my receipt is scanned, my robot reads the data and extracts it and uh, extracts it into the app and then uploads it. That only works on the mobile device. So the um, extraction of the data for uh, z zero expenses only works on the mobile app. So if I am working on my desktop computer and drag my receipts in to zero expenses, it's not doing the data extraction. Um, this is something both um, Expensify and Receipt Bank will do for you. I don't understand why 
that only works on the app and not the desktop. I don't technically um, understand why there would be a separation there of that feature. It seems that, that seems a bit bizarre to me. With zero expenses, if um, someone goes to submit it, they can actually change who the user is. Um, so if they go to submit petrol expenditure or parking, they can actually select who the user was. With expense claims, the free version, the expense claims, that wasn't possible. If I submitted, it was always assigned to Heather. If the bookkeeper came in and submitted transactions, uh, expense claims from five different people, they were all associated with the bookkeeper. So that, that was one of the big issues with expense claims. So that actually is a good feature in Zero Expenses is that you can tag um, who the particular user is. I would happily be given a pile of receipts and split them up and separate and um, assign them to the individual user appropriately. If you want to activate the optical character recognition or the, the reading of data in Zero Expenses, you have to agree to a third party accessing the receipt data. I expect this happens with all the solutions, um, but I'm just highlighting this to you. You have to agree to a third party accessing the receipt of data. Now, I asked Zero Support who this was and was advised, we aren't contractually permitted to disclose the identity of the third party. However, please be assured that we take your data privacy very seriously and have taken precautions designed to keep it secure. So, a third party is accessing your um, data if you're uh, submitting it via zero expenses. So that's how they're doing the extraction of the, the data and, and pushing it uh, into zero expenses, the sort of pulling the details out. That doesn't worry me too much, but I thought I should highlight it to you. Okay, so this was something that's interesting. When you set up zero expenses, you can limit the general ledger account codes that can be used. So you could say something like um, only travel, park, parking, hotel and food accounts could be used. Okay, so you can limit them. So that is good. And when you have an expense claims processing workflow, you do want to limit um, what people can access because they'll just allocate things to depreciation or something silly like that. What you can't do is set up different um, options for different individual users. So you can't assign account codes to be bespoke per user. Um, everyone is assigned exactly the same. So that's not too big an issue, but if you do need, um, if you've got different number, different users with different user authorities, you may want to um, assign them. And if you did, then you would look to in a solution like Expensify, which has um, a, a sort of that deep, rich assignment of account codes um, available within it. Okay, so I did process a receipt. Um, I think I processed, uh, in fact, I think I processed this one. Um, and it was parking um, and it recognized the location as Brisbane car park. So, so it automatically extracted that. However, the account allocation went to general expenses. So um, in the description, I said it, I, I manually said it was car parking. Um, it recognized that it was Brisbane car park, but then it uh, the automation allocated to general expenses. So it didn't allocate it to one of the travel accounts that was available and accessible um, via processing. Further to this, via if I do it via zero uh, expenses, um, if I do it that way, if this is a typical supplier, so if this particular car park was a typical supplier, it doesn't actually tag that expense to that supplier within zero expenses. They're, they're, they're separated. It is just a piece of reference information in my bill. That's neither a good thing or a bad thing. I'm just letting you know about that. But what it doesn't do is if in my uh, zero, uh, the, the supplier car park is always assigned to the account code car park, it doesn't pick that up. So it doesn't recognize a supplier at all. It, there is no supplier recognition there. Um, what it recognizes is just the user who's submitting it um, and it won't pull up the account code um, and automatically uh, match that across because when you're processing via expense claims, the supplier, uh, for want of a better word, is the person making the expense claim. So that's actually the user. Even if all five bills were for a petrol station, it wouldn't allocate it to a petrol station, okay? 
So that's just something to be aware of. I don't see it as a major issue, but I do see it as something to be aware of. The other final thing to, to mention there, when processing expense claims um, on the mobile app, the location icon uses your geolocation, um, so it's geosensitive. Um, so that was really kind of cool, um, and it populates with suggested business locations in the neighbourhood, um, and you go through and select the actual locations. You need to do it where the actual receipt is, um, so I paid for the parking and then came back to my office and did it, and it picked up um, the area around me. However, a part of the expense claims processes is training people to do this as fast and as quickly as possible. So that is a time saver within it. Okay, so hopefully that's given you a few things to think about in that expense claims process. One thing I have forgotten to mention that Zero Expenses does have is a feature called labels. And when I submit an expense claim, I can have individual personalized labels. And so I could say, I could set them up for, 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 for state one, state two, state three. Um, and every, anytime I was in state, uh, like say anytime I was in Victoria, I could tag them all Victoria. Anytime I was in New South Wales, I could tag them New South Wales. And then I would be able to run a report to see just for myself where the different expenses were being incurred. Labels are individual specific. It's kind of interesting and useful uh, if you're monitoring your own personal expenses and the uh, zero expense administrators can see that as well. Um, I will highlight that there's three levels of access using uh, zero expenses as well. Once you have access, once you have access, you're paying your individual subscription for that. And you have submitter, approver, um, and administrative access there. So it's sort of the three tiers. I would avoid using the free feature, the free um, zero expense claims, um, unless you really are absolutely certain you know what you're doing. If you're a small business um, that has uh, quite simple expense claims to process, then zero expenses should uh, suit you. Um, if you have a number of staff and if you need refinement, including um, uh, including sort of that deeper refinement allocated to different people, management of the expense claims process. Um, uh, I would look to Expensify, um, which uh, has a lot more features, is a lot more feature rich than you were ever going to get within, I'm going to suggest within, within um, zero uh, expenses. Hopefully, that gives you a big overview of zero expenses and saves you some time in understanding what you need to do um, and what you, uh, which ones are going to be suitable for you, for your clients. Um, hopefully I've answered everything. Um, if you do have any other questions that you think I could answer about that, please ask me. Uh, drop them in the links below. Um, if you thought this was useful, can I ask you to copy this video and place it in another uh, forum or group that you think might find it useful? And I encourage you to sign up to my newsletter, which you can find at heathersmithsmallbusiness.com forward slash newsletter. Thank you.